Suid-Afrika is een van die beste plekken in die wereld om marine soogdere waar te neem. Van die land af of van bote af? Vooral wanneer die magnifieke Southern Right en die bochlerige walvis al jaarlijkse verskyning maak en die grote dolfijnskole wat derend tyd te sene is. Maar hierdie dierese voortbestaan is in die weegskaal, want ons groeiende energiebehoeftes verskuif na die ongenning van onderseese gasbronne. Sonder betrouwbare, stabiele krachtvoorziening kan ons eenvoudig net nie leef of werk nie. Alles rondom ons is technologie, en vir technologie om te kan werk, het het kracht nodig. Een groot gedeelte van ons kracht kom van steenkool aangedrewe krachtstaties. Dit is tamelijk ondoeltreffend en een van die veilste bronne van energie. Gas aan die andere kant brand baie skoner, is meer doeltreffend en stel minder koolstof as steenkoolkrachtstaties vry. En dis hoe ons op een story kom. Het is van kardinale belang dat ons gas van daar buiten, om te voorzien in al ons energiebehoeftes en natuurlijk ook ons koolstof voetspoor te verminder. Die probleem is dat die technologie wat aangewend word om die gas te vind, kan skadelik wees vir ons seelewe. So is dat aan die moeite waard. Seismische opnames word gedoen om olie en gas neersla onder die seebodem te vind. Het is hier die opnames wat die gevare vir ons seelewe inhou, vooral vir groot soogdere soos walvisse en dolfijne. Duif van der Spuy is een geoloog van Petro S.A. Hy verduidelik hoe navorsingsvaartuie in Suid-Afrikaanse waters na onderseese gas en olie soek. Seismic surveys entail um, towing a sound source um, near surface behind a vessel which produces sound energy. The sound energy is uh, directed down at the sea floor and sound energy is reflected off different layers of rock and comes back to the surface and is picked up by recorders, also towed by the vessel, and then that is later interpreted. So, how much gas is there now actually there above? And is it the money to pay that people take a chance to get a scare on their own life? We're crossing our fingers that we are going to get some fines like they've done in Mozambique in the Rovuma Basin. And if we can get that, really, it's a lot of progress, a game changer for the country. Our uh, offshore area is currently being explored by really competent and committed explorers. And I'm certain within the next year or so, year to two, th- two three year period, we're going to announce some really good discoveries. As a mens nou dink daaran dat daar wel een mate van skade berokken kan word aan sea lewe, dink jy dis nog steeds die moeite waard om te exploreer vir die gas? The effects of this noise pollution, I suppose, that is made in the ocean on marine life is currently quite contentious and uncertain. Ivan Keer, a inwoner van Meisna, het met die vaal toch tegen seismische opnames in die gebied begin. Hy is sterk tegen die projekte gekant, vooral waar daar nie voldoende navorsing oor die dierese veiligheid gedoen is nie. It is known that it can affect the balance of creatures. It can permanently damage their ability to balance. For example, octopuses no longer can hold themselves upright. We don't know how many fish are deaf or perhaps even infertile. I mean, they're, they're only measuring the creatures that have been killed directly by it. They don't know what the non-lethal impacts of these kinds of surveys are. The problem is that the sound that is used to to the sea on the sea is so hard is that the environment can be used to the gehoor, balance and internal organs of sea, soog, dier and fish. So much so that it can lead to the changes in the behavior of fish, walvis that are stranded, even the death of these sea dieren. Dr. Harriet Davies Mostert is a deskundige on the effect that the sound on the sea life has. Sound travels really well in water, and as a result, there are many marine species that have uh, come to use sound as a main form of communication. And so seismic surveys that produce these really high, um, high impact and low frequency sounds can have impacts on species that use the same frequencies for communication. You know, these blasts produce shock waves in the water column. And so what happens is, Internal organs start to vibrate and eventually tissue, tissues can burst and uh, you can get internal bleeding. A big blast, uh, such as one that would come from a seismic gun, um, could change the auditory threshold of species. And so what it means is that they don't hear as well 
And certainly there's been studies to show that humpback whales, for example, have been entangled more in nets because they, their hearing has uh, suffered as a result of these blasts. So there are a, a wide variety of effects that seismic blasts could have on, on uh, marine wildlife. Um, I mean, the most obvious one is all oh, the physical effects, but there are a lot of behavioral um, impacts too. So for example, you might find that certain species will avoid an area completely if there are regular seismic activities in the area. So this essentially takes them away from their preferred habitats and takes them to places that might be suboptimal for their survival. So what is the foresorg materials that are on boat to get to the skade on the undersea to lewe te verminder? To switch on a seismic air gun at full power okay, could cause damage if there's an animal in close vicinity. Consequently, the operators are required to do a soft start or a ramp up where the sound is increased slowly, uh, which would really allow a behavioral flight of an animal to outside of the zone of impact, outside of the zone of injury, rather than it being blasted or being close to the air gun at full power. Unlike a, a certain overseas operations here in South Africa, the operators are required to close down the air guns if an animal is within 500 meters uh, of, a, of the firing air gun. And the marine mammal observers keep a dedicated lookout for animals, uh, both visually and acoustically. Hoewel Dr. Finlay niet dink ons met nou paniekere geraak oor die seismiese opnames aan ons kustlijn nie, beteken dit nie, hy is nie bekommerd nie. Probably the major concerns that I have at the moment is that there are numerous seismic surveys that have been carried out on the South African coast at this, at, at this time. The cumulative effects of multiple surveys are not being taken into consideration. So while much of the concern uh, for the impacts of seismic surveys goes to whales, dolphins and seals, uh, I feel that there are components of the marine fauna from plankton right through to fish, squid, etc., uh, where some of the concerns are not really well put out. I do feel it's a lot easier to manage impacts on something like a whale that you can see, that you can observe, than many of the other faunal components where it would be difficult to see actually what is happening. As the gas is so rich as what people glue, can it make a difference in our energy behoeftes? And what are the implications of this for energy?